come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. There comes an hour of sadness with the setting of the sun. Not for the sins committed, but for things I have not done. Yes, what we have done we can undo, perhaps. <laughs> there is repentance, reparation, reform, a lesson to be learned. But the act that was never performed, especially the act of goodness, is gone forever. And there is an empty space in the universe. Mr. Larson, you know and I know that you killed William Randall. That's a lie. Sooner or later, you'll confess. Lieutenant, I'll sue you for false arrest. Oh, I can't arrest you. I have no proof. And you never will. But I'll arrest you. Do you know when? On the day you ask me to. The day I... You must be crazy. You'll ask me to arrest you. You'll beg me. Give me no peace. Until I finally consent to take you into custody. <laughs> Mystery drama, Letter of Love, Letter of Death, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Michael Tolan. I'll be back shortly with Act One. Oh, what was that poem about the rose that turned its face to the sun each day with love and adoration? The rose that lived only for the light and warmth and the smile of the sun. And of course, the sun was completely unaware of the worshipping rose. Didn't even know it existed. And most likely wouldn't care. By this time, you'll probably begin to get an idea of what our story will be about. And you're right. Homicide, Lieutenant Leone. Hello? Are you calling the police? Yes. Did you ask for the homicide division? What can I do for you? Mr. William K. Randall, the late Mr. Randall, the theatrical producer who was murdered. Yes? I know who did it. You do? Yes. Go to 987 East 83rd, apartment 1B. The lady's name is Taylor. Miss Sarah Jean Taylor. 987 East 83rd, Sarah Jean Taylor. Have I got that right? Hello? Hello? Uh, uh, Eddie? Who's free to take a nut call? Yeah. Well, where is everybody? All right, I'll take it. I'm going out to lunch anyhow. East uh, 83rd. Huh. That's up in Yorkville. Why don't I uh, have some sour button? Lieutenant Leone. Uh, my identification. Oh, I believe you. May I come in? Please. I was, uh, wondering, Miss Taylor, if you could help us. How? Did you know a Mr. William K. Randall? Yes. Did you know him well? I knew who he was. Uh, did you ever have anything at all to do with him? Yes, in a way. In a way? A, a very in impersonal way. Could you explain? I work for the, the copy house. Oh, what's that? We type scripts. You know, for, for theatrical producers, TV and the like. Oh? Now, what do you do there? I'm a, a typist. And Mr. Randall is, uh, was a very good client. We, we did a lot of his plays and things. I typed up a great many of them. And uh, that's how you knew Mr. Randall? Yes, Lieutenant. You did meet him, though. Usually, he would send someone to bring a script or, or to pick one up. He was a, a very important man, you know. Yes, so I understand. Sometimes, though, if there was no one to send or, or if he was in a hurry or, or one thing or another, he'd stop by himself. Maybe something had to be corrected. Then I'd have to come in from the back room and, and he'd tell me about it. That would be the only time you'd ever see him? Yes. And the only time you'd ever speak to him? Yes. 
understand. You'd never talk about anything except the business of typing one of his manuscripts. Yes, that's right. Never any uh, personal conversation? Oh, 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 why would there be any personal conversation? Oh, uh, well, he, he might say good morning, good afternoon, depending on the time of day. Did he know your name? He might have. When he'd come in, whoever was up front would say, Sarah Jean worked on that. I'll call her. Oh, then he did know your name was Sarah Jean. Well, he was so busy and, and, and important, my name probably meant nothing to him. Why should he remember it? Would you say that he was aware of you as, uh, as a person? I, I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, how long had he been coming in there and having these uh, encounters with you? Oh, oh, perhaps ten years. And in ten years, you don't think you made any visual impact on his consciousness? No, not, not really. The William K. Randalls, they live in a, a faraway world of their very own. And if you're not in it or of it, you really don't exist for them. Miss Taylor, is, is it possible that Mr. Randall might have done you an injury? How could he have injured me? Huh. Do you have any uh, personal enemies? No. You sure? Lieutenant, I, I'm not important enough to, to have enemies. Is there anyone who dislikes you? No. Are you sure? Lieutenant, I don't know very many people. And the ones that I do know, I don't know very well. Well, can you think of anyone, anywhere, who could have a grudge against you for any reason? No. And there isn't anything you can tell me about Mr. Randall? Nothing at all. She was, what, 40, 35, 50? <laughs> she was one of those women who could be called nondescript. You see him and you don't see him. You don't notice anything about him. Maybe because there's nothing to notice. Five minutes afterwards, you can't even remember what they were wearing. Or even what they looked like. Well, I had my sour broughten, so the trip uptown was worthwhile after all. Where are we on this Randall thing, Leone? It's wide open, Inspector. Hmm. Any suspects? Sure, pick up the phone book. I understand a great many people didn't like him. Who's your leading candidate, if any? Edward Larson, the playwright. Why? Randall was supposed to produce Larson's play. Actually, the thing was going into rehearsal. And Randall called it off. Why? Who knows why? It's a flaky business at best. Anyway, Larson was all cut up about it. And for that, he'd kill Randall? He said he'd do it. In front of witnesses. Larson had been slipping badly, I understand. A couple of flops, a little bit of a drinking problem. He needed this play. Well, what have you got on him? He doesn't have an alibi for the time of the murder. Well, I don't have an alibi either. Now, of course, there's another thing. Randall was stabbed with a knife, actually a letter opener on his desk. There are prints on it. Whose? We don't know. Not Larson's. Not Jenny Daly's. Well, who's she? Ah, uh, the actress Randall threw over. She was very cut up about it. But who do the prints belong to? We don't know. Have you run the print? Not a rumble anywhere. But still, I, uh... I lean toward this guy, this Edward Larson. I know he did it. And left somebody else's fingerprints on the murder weapon? Yeah, I admit it's a problem. You don't have anyone else? All the nuts are off and running on this one. I got a tip this morning on the phone about a Miss uh, Sarah Jean Taylor. Oh, who's she? A mousy little dame. She works as a script typist. Well, what connection would she have with Randall? The company she works for types his manuscripts. Anything there? No, I don't see how. So why should anybody try to set her up? Might have been a gag. Oh, yeah? Yeah, somebody at the office figured to get her all excited. <laughs> she does lead a dull existence. Now, I still like my boy, Edward Larson. The fact is, the killer is the one with the fingerprints on the knife. And that is not Edward Larson. <laughs> The average person lives in what the psychiatrists call the emotional mind, or something like that. He goes through life on hunches, guesses, things like that. You think cops are different? They try to be, but they're the same as anyone else. Oh, it's you. Good morning, Mr. Larson. Detective Leone, isn't it? Yes. Mind if I come in? 
What are we doing? The remake of Crime and Punishment? I beg your pardon? Dostoevsky's novel. Although I wouldn't expect a police detective to have read it. I read it, Mr. Larson. And you're following it. You believe I killed Bill Randall. You intend to keep after me and after me till I confess. <laughs> well, I didn't do it. I didn't say you did. And why do you keep hounding me? I'm not hounding you. I only want to ask you some questions. Haven't you asked me enough questions? You did threaten to kill Mr. Randall if he canceled your production. Well, people say things in extreme anger. Why did he decide to cancel your play? Because he was an evil, vicious, vindictive man. Why did he agree to put it on in the first place? <laughs> to tantalize me. To lead me on. So he could set me up for the fall. The night he was killed, uh... Where were you? I don't know. At 8 p.m., where were you? I don't remember where I was. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I do. I was out walking. Who saw you? No one. Which means you have no alibi. <laughs> if I'd known I'd needed one, I'd have made sure to have had one. At 4 p.m., you went to Frank's. At the bar on the west side. I don't deny it. You were drinking pretty heavily. I had good reason. Frank himself says you were starting to say some violent things. Well, that's probably true. You said you were going to murder Randall, a swine who didn't deserve to live. He didn't deserve to live. No dispute there. Then along about 7.30, you stormed out of there. It was a pouring rain, but that didn't stop you. I wanted to be washed clean. And I walked and I walked. I don't know where. I don't know for how long, but... That's your story. That's what happened. I think something else happened. I think you walked and walked and got angrier and angrier. And you passed by Randall's place. And you went up to see him. And one thing led to another, and you picked up that letter opener on his desk and killed him. That happened at 8 p.m. That's a lie. It's the truth. That's the time of his death. Then why don't you arrest me? I have no proof. But I will arrest you. Do you know when? On the day you ask me to. I think you're crazy. Why would I ask you to arrest me? Several reasons. Take your pick. First, you're not really a killer. All right, then how could I have killed Bill Randall? Killing isn't a habit with you. It isn't your style. It's just something you did for the first time in your life under a pressure that broke you, that's all. You'll probably never kill again. Your conscience won't let you rest. Oh, my conscience is clear. Besides, you're vain. This killing is yours. It belongs to you. You won't let anyone else take credit for oh, it. Lieutenant, if you don't leave here this minute, I, I'll, I'll call my attorney. I'm on my way out. I'll, uh, I'll just place my card down here on this table. Don't bother. No, you better have my number handy in case you wake up in the middle of the night and decide to call me. Lieutenant, I warn you. No, I, I shouldn't have said in case you wake up in the middle of the night. The fact is, you'll be up. You're not getting much sleep lately. Are you? Probably not. But then again, who knows? We like to think that guilt lies heavy and destroys repose. The fact is, many of history's greatest villains got their full, refreshing eight hours a night. And besides, how do we know Edward Larson is really guilty? All that Lieutenant Leone has is a hunch. It's true he's a cop. But does that automatically make him right? We need Act Two. I can read it on his face. I can see it in his eyes. How many times do we think we can deduce from a look, a gesture, the story of another person's life? One of the oldest bits of wisdom we know comes from Aesop, who warns us that appearances are deceiving. What is this conceit so many of us have that we can tell just by looking? Yeah, come in, Leonie. Well, sit down. You want a progress report, Inspector? I don't have one. Uh, this is off the record. Lay off Edward Larson. What's this? It seems you've been giving him a hard time. Hey, now wait, Inspector. What have you got on him? Nothing. Furthermore, the prints on the knife do not belong to Larson. Therefore, it follows Larson cannot be the murderer. 
Yeah, I wish I could believe that. Believe it or not, I'll lay off. His lawyer happens to be an old friend of mine. Yeah? They could certainly raise Kane if they wanted to, but Larson's attorney figures you're just an overzealous cop. Uh-huh. And a quiet word passed along by me puts a period to the sentence. I know Larson did it. So you keep this up and you'll get both of us into trouble. You want me to take you off it? Okay, Inspector, I'll behave. But I'll still bag him. What is this thing with you, Leone? I don't know, it's just... It's just I look at him and, and there it is. You need evidence. I'll find it. It'd be better if you found out whose fingerprints are on Exhibit A. I don't care whose fingerprints are on that knife. Edward Larson is the killer. I was beginning to scare myself. What was it? Why was I so sure? All I had to do was keep this up, and like the inspector warned, I could get myself into plenty of trouble. What was I looking for? If Larson's fingerprints weren't on the knife, why was I still positive he was the killer? I just couldn't let go. I'm uh, sorry to bother you again, Mr. Calder. Oh, that's no bother at all, Lieutenant. Uh, you were William Randall's associate producer? Uh, yes, we'd worked together for many years. What uh, what kind of man was he? Oh, difficult, difficult. However, he knew what he wanted. Irritating, you know, but he was always right. I would say he was a man of integrity. He described by Edward Larson as uh, evil, vicious, vindictive. Oh, well, Edward Larson. What does that mean? Larson was, well, I should say, is finished as a writer. Actually, he finished himself. It was the booze. No one would produce his plays anymore. Mr. Randall did, or at least agreed to. Oh, yes, but that was... Larson and his sister Randall did it to tantalize him, to lead him on. Lieutenant, I think we can safely disregard anything Edward Larson says. I'm convinced that he killed Randall. Well, that is, I was. But not anymore? I um, gather from the press that the fingerprints on the murder weapon are not Larson's. It's not known whose they are. Why did Randall agree to produce Larson's play in the first place? Oh, Randall saw or thought he saw something in it. After a while, he even made me see it. That it was a good play? It had the makings of a good play, which means it, it needed work, some major rewriting. I told Randall that Larson simply was incapable of doing the rewrites. But Randall didn't agree. Well, he said, oh, let's give him a chance. It's the last one he'll ever have. Who knows? It might be an opportunity to salvage him. <laughs> I didn't believe that. Why not? Because I know Larson doesn't have it anymore. Whatever his gift is or was is gone. And you could see that in his play. We'd all agree a scene needed tightening or a character required development, and then when Larson brought in the new draft, it was worse than before, worse. <laughs> then soon the drinking began. And you say that Randall did not deliberately lead Larson on. Well, I think Randall took as much as was humanly possible. And then he simply acknowledged the inevitable. If Larson didn't kill Randall, who else could have? <laughs> Me? I felt like killing him many times. Did you? Well, my fingerprints are not on the knife. How do you know? Well, if they were, I assume I'd be arrested by now. Besides, I know I didn't do it. I might have in time, but evidently I was beaten to it. Why would you want to kill your partner? Money? We were a very successful producing team, artistically successful. But uh, Randall always managed to make sure that we would lose money. Oh, it was a gift. Why did you stay with him? The man is a genius. Oh, was a genius. Oh, yes, it was worth it. Besides you, who could have killed him? Well, time is of the essence, so let's stay with prime candidates. Jenny Daly? I wouldn't be surprised if her fingerprints were on that knife. Why? Oh, she thought he belonged to her. But lately, there, uh, there's there been suspicion of another woman somewhere. Um, another woman? Was that true? Oh, who knows, Lieutenant, with Randall, anything was possible. You never knew what he was thinking or doing. <laughs> Jenny had a few tantrums about it, and she could become violent. Another woman? 
I didn't say there was another woman. Those were just rumors. A mystery woman. Ah, yes, Lieutenant. That has a good sound to it. <laughs> a mystery woman. What's this about a mystery woman? They think Randall was tied up with some mysterious dame. What does that break down into? This Jenny Daly was jealous because Randall wasn't paying too much attention to her, so she figures there's another dame. Mystery woman. And Leone, you're working too hard. Besides, we have to get the killer sooner or later. We've got the fingerprints. We'll turn him up somewhere. Him? All right, maybe her. I tell you what. I take you out to lunch. No, no, I have to lose weight. Oh, me too. Well, let's start tomorrow. What's today? Tuesday. The big special at Schmitz is a sauerbrot. Oh, I, I don't, I don't know. It's come on, uh, come on, come on. We'll shoot up to Yorkville. Hey, wait a minute. Mystery woman. That woman. What woman? I got a tip on the phone. This dame up in Yorkville sounded like a nut call. This voice said Sarah Jean Taylor killed Randall. I, I told you about her. What would a man like Randall want with a dame like that? Maybe that's why she's a mystery dame. Excuse me, Inspector. Leone. Lieutenant Leone? Yes? Why haven't you arrested Sarah Jean Taylor? Uh, what for? Who is this? A murder. Inspector, see if you can trace this. Uh, what, uh, what do you mean? Eddie, get a trace on the call on Leone's line. What, uh, what did you tell me? I told you she was guilty. Yes, but, uh, I need, uh, I need evidence. You have all the evidence you need right now. Uh, hello? Hello? Ah, he hung up on me. Eddie, get anything? Okay. He didn't have enough time. Well, we have two mystery women. One is Miss Sarah Jean Taylor, and the other is the one who's trying to set her up. What did she say to you this time? Same thing. She said Sarah Jean did it. And when you asked her for the evidence, what did she say? She said we have all the evidence we need right now. No, we don't have any evidence at all. But we do, Inspector. And it's all the evidence we need. Oh. Miss Taylor. Oh, it, it's the detective. May, may I come in? Please. Miss Taylor, I must ask you to come down to police headquarters. Why? I haven't done anything. No, nobody says you did. Well, then why am I being arrested? You're not being arrested. Then why must I go? We'd, uh, we'd like to ask you some questions. Oh, uh, well, you've already asked me some questions. Well, we have to ask some more. Well, then ask them here. Look, Miss Taylor, I'm, I'm asking you to cooperate. However, if you refuse, I can return with a warrant. A warrant? Then I am being arrested. No, please, Miss Taylor. A certain matter has to be cleared up. What certain matter? We can only attend to that at headquarters. But, but I'm innocent. I didn't do it. You didn't do what, Miss Taylor? I didn't do anything. I never did anything in my life. I, 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 I j just sit behind a typewriter. I, I never did anything to anybody. What, what do you want with me? Most probably nothing. Well, whatever I'm, I'm supposed to have done, I'm innocent. And all we want to do is give you a chance to prove it. I, I don't have to prove anything. If, if, if you accuse me of a crime... You must prove it. Nobody's accused you yet. I'm just asking you to come down to headquarters. Where is she? In my office. She's guilty or she isn't. It's that simple. And now we find out. Yes? Okay, Eddie, thanks. Clear as a bell. As if they're engraved in marble. Those are her prints on the knife. They are? Eddie downstairs says he's never seen such sharp, bold prints. We've got it. It's your color. And you get all the credit. Yeah. And it just fell into your lap, too. Well, makes up for all the tough ones. Let's book it. Miss Taylor, 
Lieutenant Leone here has just read you your rights as prescribed by the law. My, my, my rights? You care to make a statement? Oh, what can I say? That I'm sorry. Sorry I killed him. But I'm not. Sorry I was caught. But I'm not. Not really. I couldn't live with this for the rest of my life. Lieutenant, I'm sorry I was so sharp with you back at my apartment. That's all right. You seem to be a a very pleasant sort of man. Why are, are you on the police force? We have many pleasant men on the police force. Uh, Jerry, would you deliver Miss Taylor here to a matron? Do you mind going with this officer, Miss Taylor? Oh, no. Not at all. I, you know, I, I would have confessed, I suppose, in the long run. Goodbye, gentlemen. And so, Lieutenant, that wraps it up. We have the killer of William K. Randall, have we? What's this now? Are you all right, Leone? I don't think we got the killer. Leone, her fingerprints are on the knife. She admits it. And this bears out your theory of a mystery woman. What are you doing? I don't care about her fingerprints. I wouldn't believe her on a stack of Bibles. And who says we have a theory of a mystery woman? Uh, Leone, I'm going to humor you for about ten seconds. Now, you say she didn't do it. Who did? Who? Edward Larson. Who else? Believe about a quarter of what you hear. And maybe half of what you see. And maybe, just maybe, you won't be taken in. But look now. Her prints are on the knife, and she says she did it. What does Detective Leone want? What more does he need? Well, he's only got one more act in which to get it. And that's in just a few minutes. Discover... what we know? Well, we have worked out, or at least our philosophers have, what might be called a scientific method. We use observation, and we use experience. We use testing. We set up criteria. And we use common sense. If you're caught with your hand in the till, obviously you're up to no good. Now, you would think that a police detective, of all people, would have no trouble with this line of thinking. Why did you kill him? He, he betrayed me, Lieutenant. I, I don't understand. We were in love. Who was in love? William Randall and I. He was in love with you? Yes. When I first spoke to you about him, you remember? Yes. You insisted there was absolutely nothing between you. It was at most a casual kind of business relationship. That's what you said. I lied. I was under no obligation to tell you the truth. I wasn't under oath. Well, yes, Miss Taylor, but... but besides, still... our love was a secret thing. Oh? Soon he would leave the theater, leave this entire way of life, and the two of us would retire to a lovely mountain wilderness. I have his letters with me. I'll read you one. His letters? All the letters he wrote to me. I carry them always. A lovely mountain wilderness made tame by your presence. And thus we too shall know the joys of Eden. That's what he wrote to you? Oh, yes. And listen, ask nothing more of me, sweet. All I can give, I have given. Forget that I remember it and, and, and dream that I forget. Yes, to what? When they started to turn cold, the letters. Oh? The beautiful letters he wrote me. And then there came the final letter. Here, this one. Read it. You want me to read it? I can't. Please. Um, and the best and the worst of it is this. That neither of us is to blame. 
You will forget my kisses, and I will forget your name. That... That's how they chose to say goodbye to me. Let, let me try to understand this. For how many years did he write you these letters? Ten. For ten years you carry on his correspondence, and it's all a promise for the future, right? I believed him. I believed him with all my heart. Uh-huh. And then something happened to break up this little thing you had going. What was it? I don't know exactly what. I, I, don't, I don't remember. But it made you mad. Mad, yes. In the sense that, that it deprived me of my reason temporarily. And so you decided to kill him? I did. In a fit of rage. All right. Tell me, how, how did you get into his apartment? I had a key. A key? Yes. Uh, forgive me, I... I thought you'd implied all this time that it was a platonic affair. I have implied nothing. You may infer whatever you choose. Can you tell me what happened? Yes. I, I, I received his last letter. I, I, I brooded. And I decided to face him with it. I went to the apartment and, and we, we talked. And then I thought it was of no use. He had become tired of me. He just decided to cast me aside. So I became furious. I, I, I saw the letter opener, long, slim, sharp, and lethal. I picked it up and I plunged it into his heart, his fickle and faceless heart. Yeah. Yeah. Do you, you've never been in love with him. If you can doubt what I'm telling you. Killed him. Let the world know it. Let the world judge me. How may I help you, Lieutenant? Uh, Mr. Dorset, you're the manager of Copy House. Uh, the night manager. Uh, we go 24 hours a day. You do? Uh, we employ a lot of actors. Uh, well, aspiring actors. They need their days free to make rounds. You see. Uh, about Miss Sarah Jean Taylor. Uh, how about Miss Sarah Jean Taylor? To think that that was going on all this time. What was going on all this time? The affair she was having with Mr. Randall. How do you know she was having an affair? Isn't that what it says in the papers? What would happen when he would come in here? The most superb acting you would ever hope to see in your life. But, uh... Who knew then that it was acting? What did it look like? Just the most casual, impersonal, unimportant passing of the time of the day. Even that very last time. What about it? Well, he had complained about ten wrong pages in a script. And she said she would work overtime and deliver it that evening. And I happened to overhear it. She said, I'll hand it to the doorman. And he said, I don't have one. I tell you what, here's the key to my apartment. Just place the script inside the door. And he gave her the key? What a charade. So she stayed overtime and finished the script? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Till 10 o'clock. And then she left. Till when? At, at 10. You're sure? Oh, yes. I marked her time sheet. 10 o'clock. Thank you very much. So, 10 o'clock, what about her? If she left at 10 to deliver the script, she could not have killed Randall. Why not? Coroner says he was killed at around 8. Well, an hour or two leeway in these things isn't unusual. It's not an exact science. I know what happened. So do I. She killed him. No. Well, how did her fingerprints get on the knife? She placed them there. But tell me why. So we would think she killed him. Remember the report from fingerprinting? Jerry said something about sharp, clear, bold lines, perfect prints. Yeah, that's all. Shouldn't there have been other prints on the letter opener, too? Why? You know why. A letter opener, it's in regular use. It's covered with prints. If she picked it up in a fit of anger, she wouldn't leave a unique set of prints. Maybe you could make hers out, but there'd be others, too. Wouldn't there? <laughs> you don't give up, do you? So look, you got nowhere to go. You got a confession. You got a murder weapon with fingerprints. It's established she went there. 
And so we can safely say, case closed. Uh, may I come in, Mr. Larson? I warn you, Lieutenant, the next time my lawyer's going to make an issue of this, it'll cost you your badge. It's my badge. What do you care? What do you want now? I, uh, I want to tell you a story. <laughs> Why? Because you're a writer. That is, if you can stop drinking long enough. Now, wait a minute. Come on, I'm doing this to save you. Save me from what? Yourself. You can't write anymore. That's why Randall canceled your play. You couldn't face that terrible truth, so you killed him. All right, I heard enough. I'm calling my lawyer. Why? He can't solve your problem. I can't. What are you talking about? I'll give you a theme. Maybe it'll inspire you. Theme? What do you know? Just about? listen. There's a woman named Sarah Jean Taylor. A shy, timid, self-effacing little woman. Mousy. What made her that way? I don't know. You're the writer. Find the why. Just what are you setting up to follow this? Think about it. She has nothing. She has nobody. But she works as a typist in a place where they copy plays and, and stories and novels. So every day she reads about love, romance, adventure. And so she... She creates a fantasy. She lives it. A handsome, dynamic man walks into her office. Randall. She imagines a love affair with him. Are you listening? Good. And, and so she pretends he's writing letters to her. Yeah. Of course, she writes them to herself. Sure, of course. She worships him at a distance. He doesn't know. How could he? But this make-believe is real for her. Yeah, yeah, certainly. It's the only reality in her life. You're getting there. The letters are filled with things that she's read. Remember, she's read some of the best things in the world. And, and those phrases find their way into her letters. I know exactly what I would use. Suddenly, one night, she has to go to his house to make a script delivery. And she does. And there he is. Dead. Dead on the floor. Of course. What an opportunity. She couldn't have him in life, so she'll have him in death. He's been murdered. She sees the weapon on the floor. A letter opener. That's right. She wipes it clean and carefully places her own fingerprints on it. And how does she get caught? She disguises her voice, tips off the police, Keeps leading them on. Naturally, yeah. Naturally, she wants to be caught. Naturally. And she is. They've got her. Never mind that a stubborn detective sees through it. They've got her nailed. They could send her up for life. Now, I ask you, Mr. Larson, as a dramatist, as a storyteller, is this how it should end? Well, is it? the story, Mr. Larson. Write it, and you'll save yourself. You'll prove you're a writer once again. It's the only way, isn't it? Well, can you write it? I can write it. Can you write the true ending? Because without it, you have no story. Yes, Lieutenant. Hello, Lieutenant. Welcome back to Copy House. Ah, isn't it marvelous the way things worked out? Our Sarah Jean was innocent after all. Yes, she was. Uh, do you suppose I could see her for a minute? Certainly. Just go through that door. Thank you. She didn't kill him. But do you personally think she was having an affair with him? Through uh, this door? Uh, Miss Taylor? It's you, Lieutenant. I just thought I'd drop by. Oh, that's very considerate. Make sure you're getting along okay. Oh, yeah. Everything's fine. You don't have to worry anymore. The case is closed. The case? The Randall murder case. Oh. You won't be bothered again. 
I don't think there'll even be a trial. Larson will spend the rest of his life with psychiatrists. Uh, it's been nice meeting you, and I'm happy everything turned out well. Oh, thank you. Goodbye, Lieutenant. And so, Harry Larson will be the man my dearest, my very own, now that I have found you, I shall never leave you. Say the words that will make me the happiest of mortal men. Your adoring Lieutenant Leon. As the popular song says, your magic spell is everywhere. Yes, indeed. Everywhere and anywhere. And as another popular song puts it, love can come to anyone. I'm sure the skeptical, practical, and hard-headed among you might insist that love is only an illusion for Sarah Jean Taylor. But then, of course, it can be argued that love is only an illusion to begin with. I'll be back shortly with more illusions. people work at humdrum, routine jobs. So many people live by themselves. Is this the only world they know? Or do they transport themselves into another realm, somewhere high in the imagination? That quiet, serious, nondescript-looking woman across the aisle on the bus. No ring on her finger. She probably isn't married. What is she thinking about? What is she dreaming about? Some of those dreams would make the finest stories in the world. And what a pity that we shall never hear them. Our cast included Michael Tolan, Martha Greenhouse, Robert Dryden, and Ian Martin. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. Athletes know what it's like to battle the heat and glare of the summer sun. They also know the...